Hello shape enthusiasts, welcome back to another episode in our blueprint optimization and compacting series. In this episode, we will build our first shape processing blueprint dealing with rotation. Behind me, you can see the three that I had already built from my Let's Play series. If you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. There'll be a link in the description. But one will rotate shapes 180 degrees, one will rotate it counterclockwise, and one will rotate it clockwise. The blueprints that I built are already on a one by one uh, platform so I don't think we can actually compact this anymore but we will show you how to build one from scratch and replicate that for the other two types of rotation so let's get into it this isn't a complex blueprint so I'd like to get through it quite quickly let me just delete that we're going to start with a one by one platform then the way I'm going to design this and it might end up slightly different to my let's play and we will um, if we find any ways to optimize it then that will be a great thing but I don't think there will be. Uh, in your shape processing section, you will find a rotator object. What does a rotator object do? Well, it does exactly what it says. It rotates it. So you can see the shape coming in and you can see how it changes that shape. If I just add a bin in here, you can see that happening. Boom, clockwise rotation, exactly what it says. Nothing tricky, nothing complicated. But how do we build this up? as a platform that you can simply add onto any space belt and it will give you the rotated version of that shape. Well, it's pretty simple. We have a look at our rotator. We see how many of these do we need to saturate a belt and it says two. So that means we just need two rotators. I will build my two rotators here as close to the in incoming belt as possible. Then uh, that will satisfy one belt. The belt needs to go out somewhere. We'll deal with that in a second. Then we just simply copy that and then we will put it somewhere else. Maybe I'll have my output going this way instead. That would be smart. Split the input and the output. Then we can have another one going in here just like that. And now we have satisfied two belts. And once we've done that, we can figure out how we're going to get that out. Probably the cleanest way would just be doing something like this. And I think that's how I ended up with my design. If you guys can think of a cleaner way to do this design, please let me know. Uh, but otherwise, I think I am quite happy with the original design I came up with. I don't think we can compact this any further. To complete the design, we simply take a copy of our half blueprint and then we flip it and we put it on the other half of our blueprint and that will now handle all four input lanes, put it through these clockwise rotators. They will uh, rotate the shape and then output it. Very, very simple, straightforward stuff, guys. If you put a bin on the end of that, you will see it is functioning at 100% efficiency, uh, but we should validate that just in case. Always validate your work, guys. But yeah, it definitely looks like everything is moving at 100% efficiency. That will be your, uh, what I like to call the Mark 1 rotator because it handles one level of input. Um, now we need to get this working for the other two levels of input. Remembering our space belt comes out on all three levels. Uh, I will leave the bin here so you can see the items flowing and that would make a little bit more sense, wouldn't it? So here you can see it's only throwing items on one level. The other two levels are stagnant. We need to make this work for all three levels. And this is another concept we're gonna be using throughout the series, guys. If you create a design that works on one level and doesn't utilize any of the other levels, see my level two and three are clear, you can simply copy that design. You can press E to go up one level, paste it, E to go up one level, paste it, and in theory, your single level design will now work on all three levels and you don't have to think about it as much or if at all. Uh, once you have that design, we can create a similar design for uh, our... Oh, look, look at that. It turned out exactly the same as I have there. You can create a similar design for your clockwise, counterclockwise and 180 degree rotator. So you can just simply copy that in. Once you've copied over your original rotator, we need to change the rotation parts of this. So you can do this however you like, but I'll just go in and quickly change my clockwise rotator to a counterclockwise rotator, just like that. And we'll make sure we do that on every level. There's only a couple here, so I'll just manually go through and change it. And I won't bore you by repeating that process again for the 180 degree rotator, but it's exactly the same process. So you make your three rotators. Uh, let's just double check our uh, bin is fully saturated. After a while, it looks like it is now fully saturated and everything is going at 100%. Always validate your work, guys. 
Uh, now, before we save our blueprint, we can ask ourselves, does this adhere to our three principles of design? One being efficiency. Well, our belts are fully saturated, so that is done. The second being compactness. This is on a one by one platform. I don't believe it can be any more compact. And finally, does it adhere to principle number three, cleanliness? I think that looks pretty clean to you. The only alternative I can suggest, if you really wanted to uh, fully optimize everything, is using belt launches instead. Uh, let me just hide that. You can cut the thing here and then turn it into a belt launcher. Belt launchers do cover the same distance in a shorter amount of time, so technically this will improve the speed at which it works. So maybe we should do that. So we just chuck belt launchers on the end of these wherever there's a big long straight path and that should help ever so slightly with efficiency. But if you do this across all of your blueprints, then all the little efficiency bonuses will add up. Great, um, it's pretty simple stuff guys. Uh, we'll keep it simple for now. It's gonna get very complex very quickly as we get into some of the more complex blueprints in future episodes, such as cutting and stacking and painting and all that fun stuff. But for now, I think I'll leave it here. Don't forget to control S and save your blueprints and name it appropriately. Uh, other than that, all these blueprints that I make will be available in the comments. So go check that out. All right, see you guys.